Hi, good morning everyone. God bless you and a very warm welcome to every single one of you. Trust you are blessed and trust you are safe. Let us um, proceed to the communion table with bow and prayer. Thank you, Lord. Father, we bless your holy name. We glorify you, wonderful Father in heaven. Hallowed be the name of the living God. I thank you, Lord Jesus. I thank you for the body and I thank you for the blood. And as we drink and we eat and we partake of that which is holy this morning, we remember the Lord. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for the great sacrifice that you made. We thank you, Lord, for the blood that was shed. And this morning as we drink and we eat, we remember the Lord Jesus. We remember what he has done. And we do this in accordance with his word. As he said unto us, do this as often as you can in remembrance of me. So today we remember the Lord Jesus as we drink of the blood of the Lamb and we eat of the body of Christ. We think of Jesus. We thank you for that mighty body and the mighty blood of the Lamb as it goes through our body. Surely, Lord, this morning, for those of us that are sick, we will be healed. For the blood of Jesus heals us. The blood of Jesus delivers us. The blood of Jesus protects us. We thank you for the blood, Lord. Thank you for the body. As we drink and we eat, we think of Jesus. Thank you, mighty, mighty God. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. You may partake. I greet you once again in the wonderful name of Jesus, um, especially to those that have joined us now. Welcome to the um, uh, King Sire Place online service. And um, that as we proceed to the word, let us bow in prayer. Thank you, Lord God Almighty. Father, I pray as the word is being delivered this morning, it will be like seeds sown on good soil. Till the soul of our hearts this morning, Lord. Let us, the soul of our hearts be good soul. For as the word is sown this morning, let it take root, let it grow, and let it bear fruit in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray, Lord, as Holy Spirit, you speak through me this morning, that I might only be the microphone for the Holy Ghost. That as the word cometh forth, that I might be ministered to, even as I speak. And I pray, Holy Spirit, touch our hearts this morning. Implant your words in our hearts. That him who has ears, hear what the Spirit of God is saying. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for guiding me, touching my tongue, that I may speak that which you ask me to speak. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Good morning once again. If you've just joined us, third good morning. Um, today I'm going to be speaking about how to deal, how to deal with fear, how how to deal with the spirit of fear, in light of that which has been going on this last week, especially. Let me read. Let me read from Second Timothy one verse seven. Second Timothy one verse seven. For God did not give us a spirit of, of timidity or cowardice, or fear, but he has given us a spirit of power and of love and of sound judgment and personal discipline, which is the ability to result in a calm, well-balanced mind and self-control. That's the amplified version. When we talk about fear, this is a... I did speak about this last year, about this time, I think, <coughs> about a year back. I'm expanding on it. The Holy Spirit has asked me to speak about this this week in especially in what's going on at the moment um so there are two kinds of fear the first is a spirit of fear which is your phobias you have a fear of this and a fear of that people have fear of spiders and people and heights and disease COVID 19 death that's one type of fear the second type of fear 
But the second fear is the fear of the Lord. A spirit of fear is unhealthy. It is consuming, it's paralyzing, it can bring about panic. On the other hand, the fear of the Lord is healthy, it's necessary, and it builds you up. Considering what South Africa is going through and what we've been through over the last week, you know, fear elevated tremendously this week due to the unrest and the looting and that which happened. And many South African citizens were gripped in fear and panic. There was a fear of death, there was a fear of the of safety for your family, fear of losing possessions, fear of getting hurt or injured, fear of death. And all along we've been dealing with COVID-19 for the last more than a year now and its continuous mutation, the different variants. And we've been seeing people that have been passing away, people that have been sick in hospital, lockdowns and curfews. And this week there was more unrest and looting in our food shortages, fuel shortages. People have been calling me on Wednesday night in panic from um, KZN. And you, know, you could hear the sound of looters in the background. It was a fearful thing. And it's understandable because fear can grip you. It can overtake your mind. It can cause panic. So today we're going to talk about how do we deal with this? Because COVID-19 is not going anywhere for now. And fear comes in many ways besides what has happened recently. How do we deal with fear? The solutions for dealing with fear in the Word of God. And we're going to look at it today. We need to remember that we can't be like the world. We have to think differently. We need to remember that we may be in this world, but we are not of this world. John 15, 19, it says, If you were of the world, the world would love you as its own. But because you are not of this world, and I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you, we need re to remember we serve a living God. He's far, far, far above every problem that we can face and is able to undertake. Our hearts need to turn to him. We're going to look at the origin of fear. Where did fear start off? And we're going to look at Genesis 3, verses 8 to 12, Adam and Eve. Genesis 3, verses 8 to 12. And let me read. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. So the man and his wife hid and kept themselves hidden from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord called to Adam and he said unto him, Where are you? And Adam said, I heard the sound of you walking in the garden. And I was afraid, first sign of fear, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid myself. And the Lord said unto them, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten fruit from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? And the man said, The woman whom you gave to me, she gave me the fruit from the tree, and I ate it. So there's three things to notice here. Firstly, after Adam and Eve, Adam and Eve, they sinned by disobedience. I disobeying. And from disobedience came fear. Adam never showed fear before this. Once he disobeyed, he started to say unto God, I was afraid. So the first thing, disobedience, which is sin, opens the door to fear. Disobedience, which is sin, opens the door to fear. And the eighth verse, which I just read, said, says rather, they kept themselves hidden from the presence of God. Now fear because of sin, can keep you away from the presence of God. Fear can keep you away from the presence of God. Fear is from the enemy. We need to keep that in mind. Fear is from the devil. Fear can keep you away from the presence of God. Therefore, to beat fear, you need to seek the presence of God or push into the presence. That's one of the ways of beating fear, but we'll go on to that now. So fear can cause you to keep away from the presence of God. And thirdly, Fear, as we read, can cause you to pass the blame or pass the buck. If you notice in verse 12, Adam said, The woman that you gave me, she gave me the fruit. He was trying to blame God. And then he said, she gave me the fruit. The inference being, I'm innocent. I did nothing. She gave me the fruit. He tried to pass the blame on Eve. So fear entered through sin. And when that happened, man fell and Jay, we all sin after our ancestor Adam. And thus we refer to this world as a fallen world, which is filled with sin. And only through the cleansing or the forgiveness of the blood of Jesus and the finished work on the cross, the grace of God, can this be cleansed. 
sin can be cleansed. So the lesson from Adam would be, as much as we sin daily, we need to learn to repent daily. We've been saying this so often recently, because repentance puts you in right standing with God and keeps fear out. Repentance puts you in right standing with God and keeps fear out. As often as you pray, repent. My advice to you is often as you pray, repent. You know, I'm often astounded by people who know that God forgives. We all know that. As often as you say he forgives, but they take it for granted. And they sin as we all do, and they never repent. And people that do that, that don't repent, they eventually become proud individuals because they start to think that all is well. And then they wonder why they don't break through. Because remember, God resists the proud. God resists the proud. And if you're trying to push in, looking for a breakthrough, looking for answers to prayer, and if you've got pride, God will resist your prayer. And proud individuals don't repent. Proud people don't repent. Remember the Lord's Prayer was a daily prayer. The Lord's Prayer was a daily prayer. Forgive us our sins, Lord, as we forgive those that sinned against us. A daily prayer. We need to be people that walk in repentance daily. Be reminded of the fact that we sin daily. So going on from that point, from that time onwards, many men and women throughout the Bible have fallen prey to fear. Great men of the Bible, mighty prophets have fallen to fear. But they all overcame. And we need to learn from them. What did they do that enables them to overcome? What did they do that caused fear to come into their lives? One of the ones that I want to talk about is Elijah. You'll find out, read about Elijah in the first, um, first and second Kings. He was a mighty prophet. Elijah was a mighty prophet. He heard directly. He heard directly from God. When he asked the rain to stop, it stopped for three years. Three and a half years rather. And then he asked it to stop raining and it did. The man raised a boy from the dead. He called fire from heaven. He was not a wealthy man, by the way. There were some days Elijah had to ask people for water and bread. But this man was so close to God, he heard directly from the Lord. And he spoke what the Lord said. He heard what God said and he spoke what God said. He did what God asked him to do. There was only one other person like Enoch in the Bible who did not experience death, but was translated or taken up to heaven without dying. And that was Elijah. So Elijah and Enoch were the only two. Yet one day after this great mighty prophet, a mighty man of God, after destroying the 450 prophets of Baal, Jezebel sent him a message. You'll find that in 1 Kings 19 verse 2. And this is what Je Jezebel said in the message that she sent to Elijah. She said, may the gods strike me and even kill me if by this time tomorrow I have not killed you just as you have, not, just as you have killed them or the prophets. Tomorrow this time I will have your head. And the man fled and he hid himself in a cave. A mighty man of God. He fled and he hid himself in the cave. He was only restored when God spoke to him and God reassured him. Now, why did this happen? How come this mighty man who did some amazing things, who was not afraid to slay 450 false prophets, how come he ran away in fear? You see, all along Elijah, he heard what God said. He only heard what God said. He did what God said. He did not bother what others said. What happened otherwise made no difference. He heard what God said and did what God said. But this time, Elijah heard the message from Jezebel that she was out to kill him. When he heard that word, he fled in fear. This is the second thing to understand when you want to overcome fear, when you're dealing with fear, is that you need to know and be sure that you are hearing from God and not your enemy Satan. The moment Elijah heard from, from Jezebel who was his enemy, fear came into him and he fled and hid in a cave. All along, there was no fear because all along he heard from the Lord God and he did what God said. You know, today, 
we are inundated with news, especially this week with all the stuff that is going on. You can read news the entirety. Oh, there's a lot of bad stuff. But all the looting and the writing and the burning and the killing. And the more you read this, the more this thing gets into your spirit. And the fear of death and the fear of suffering and the fear of your safety, your family safety, starts to fill you. It's natural. That which you fill yourself with will prosper. That which you fill yourself with will prosper. If you fill yourself with all the bad news, that is going to prosper. If you fill yourself with the word of God, then you get what God is saying and the word will prosper. You will start to hear what God is saying, not what the enemy is saying. And that's when your faith and your hope and your strength will start to rise. If you spend more time with the word than all the news that you get, I'll give an example. You know, we all read Facebook and we read the news. We listen to it. We see it all over the place. It comes up on our WhatsApp groups. If you count up all the time that you spend reading the news, especially during this past week, all the articles you read and all the videos that you watch, it can mount up to two to three hours in a day. We've put it all together because we get so consumed by all the stuff that is happening. Reading all the stories and watching all the videos. The question to ask you, do you spend two to three hours a day reading the word of God? You know, the word of God says in Jeremiah 29, 29 verse 11, a word, the scripture that everyone knows. For I know the plans that I have for you and the thoughts that I have for you, says the Lord. Plans for peace and well-being, and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. When the word of God fills you, that's the word that will fill you. The more of the word that you read, the more hope, the more faith that you will have, and the lesser will be your fear. If you continue filling yourself with all the bad news, rather than the good news of the word, then bad will start to rise up, fear will start to rise up. You know, of course, we need to know what's going on. But don't get so caught up in it that you become so full with all the bad stuff that is happening that fear starts to grip you and you start to imagine the worst and the same thing happening to you. You know, if you think about the recent unrest that happened this past week, do you really need to know about every single incident that happened in every corner of the country and watch every video? How would it really profit you? How would it really profit you? We don't need to. Sure enough, you need to be aware of what's going on around you and your community and the areas you have interest in. But if you fill yourself with all the bad news and all the looting videos and seeing all the bad stuff happening, there is no doubt fear will get to you. The point I'm trying to make, as much as you may do that for information's sake, spend more time with the Word of God because the Word of God will do exactly the opposite of what fear will instill which will put faith in you and the good news of the gospel will get you. A good example in point of people that were someone that was facing death, because that's what happened today, this week. People were facing death. They were under threat. Their homes were being under threat of being burned, the factories, the businesses, and people were fearful of their lives. Acts 7, I'm talking about Stephen. Acts 7.55, the stoning of Stephen. Let me read 7.55 to 60. And just talking about Stephen. But he, being full of the Holy Spirit, led by him, gazed into heaven and saw the glory, the great splendor and majesty of God, and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And he said, Look, I see the heavens opened, and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. And his final words in the 60th verse were, Lord, do not hold the sin against them. Do not charge them. When he had said this, he fell asleep in death. Now this man was facing, imagine facing a mob of people intent on killing you in the most grievous way, stoning you to death. There's no way out of it. They're in front of you. They got stones in their hands and they're going to stone you to death. Anyone in that position normally would be terrified, would be pleading for their life, whimpering, crying maybe, full of fear of their forthcoming death. Some of them would be vengeful. Why did Stephen not flinch? Actually, Stephen prayed that those that were going to stone him 
would not be punished by God. Why did Stephen not flinch? Stephen was a young man. He was not a old man where we could say, oh, he was near death and he could say, ah, it's fine, I lived a long life. Stephen was a young man. Why did Stephen not flinch? In verse 55, which we just read, it says, but he, being full of the Holy Spirit and led by him, that was Stephen's secret. He was full of God, the Holy Spirit, and he was being led by the Holy Spirit. You know, as long as we are reborn sons and daughters of the Holy of the of the Lord, we must be led by God, the Holy Spirit. Somehow this comes up every week in Romans 8, 14. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. I can't count how many times I say that recently. Our reactions, our behavior, our actions, our words must stem from the leading of the Holy Spirit. That is trusting God. We are able to trust more when the Holy Spirit within us is leading us. We always need to remember that your life is in the hands of God. God calls the shots. No one decides when you go, when you die, except God himself. In Psalms 139 verse 16, it says, All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. God ordained the number of days that you will spend on earth. God knows how many days you will live. It's up to him. He makes a decision, no one else. When he says it's done, it's done, you go home. Once you realize that God controls it, then your fear will take a back seat. Your trust must be rooted in him. God must be real. We say this so often. God must be really real to you. It mustn't be just some daily religious activity of devotion. It must be a talking, living, intimate relationship, talking to God all the time. Grow past your devotions, as I've said a few weeks ago. As God is real, your relationship with him must be as real as your relationship is with your spouse and your children or your friends. Watch out for religion, as I always say. Sometimes we get caught into a religious routine and we don't even know God. When you really know God, everything will change. In Acts 12, verses 4 to 6, the time when Peter was arrested by God. So one of the things we took from Stephen was being filled with the Holy Spirit. We preach so much a message about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit must be your intimate companion all the time intimate companion all the time. Acts 12 verses 4 to 6. This speaks about the arrest of Peter by, by Herod, King Herod. So let me read from the fourth verse. After arresting him, after arresting Peter that was, he put him into prison. That was Herod, putting him into prison, handing him over to be guarded by four squads of four soldiers each. Herod intended to bring him out for public trial after the Passover. And Peter was kept in prison, prison, but the church was earnestly praying to God for him. The night before Herod was to bring him to trial, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and sentries stood guard at the entrance. Now, how is that possible? Remember when Peter was arrested? He was on a go for trial, as we read. He knew that he would likely be found guilty. He would likely be executed. How was it possible that this man, Peter, had no fear? He had no fear because he was going to go to trial soon, likely going to be found guilty and be executed. How did this man worry not so much so that he was sleeping? He was sleeping in peace. How was it possible that he could be sleeping in peace when everything pointed to the fact that soon he would be executed. The answer to that is in John 21 verse 18. And this is in the time of Jesus, when Jesus walked. In John 21 verse 18, the Lord Jesus said unto Peter, this is way before the crucifixion and the, um, the resurrection. He said unto Peter, he said, I assure you and most solemnly say unto you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and walked wherever you wish. But when you grow old, when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and arms and someone else will dress you and carry you where you do not wish to go. That was the Lord Jesus' words to Peter. So the Lord clearly said unto Peter, when you grow old. So Peter knew by the words of God, of the Lord Jesus Christ, that he would grow old and nothing ever could do would result in him dying young. Peter had heard the word of God from God himself. 
he knew that God said when he grew old, something will happen. So he knew that nothing Herod could do would result in him dying young. In fact, the history of that is Peter ministered some 30 years after the resurrection of Jesus. He was martyred in Rome by Emperor Nero in about AD 67. You see, Peter, Peter had heard from the word himself, which is the Lord Jesus. So we all need to know the Lord Jesus through his word. And above all, as much as you know the word and read the word and study the word, we need to believe the word. You need to believe the word. Reading the word is not good enough. Believe the word. You know, just like knowing about Jesus is not good enough. Knowing about Jesus is not good enough. Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. You and your household, believe. The biggest fear today, by the way, is the fear of death. Most people fear death. As Christians, it should be the opposite. But nevertheless, so from Peter, we could learn that we need to know the word, know our God, and believe what God is saying through his word. So as I said, the biggest fear today is the fear of death. That's why, by the way, Abraham, for example, in Genesis 20, we lied about his wife to King Abimelech, the king of Shechem, because he feared that the king might take his wife and he would kill him. He feared death. The fear of death is very prevalent. Peter, as we spoke about, the first pastor, as we may call him, he preached an amazing first sermon, as we know. However, but before Peter got to that point, remember, he ran away when the Lord Jesus was arrested. Despite all the big talk, because Peter was a talker, he spoke, he was a man that acted first, often before thinking. All the big talk that he said before the Lord Jesus was arrested in Matthew 26, 35, we'll read about that. And Peter said unto the Lord Jesus, even if I have to die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. But when the reality came, Peter ran away. He ran away because he feared that he would be arrested and he would be possibly killed or executed. But then Peter went on to become a mighty apostle, apostle rather. And his accelerated growth happened when the Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost. When Peter met the Holy Spirit, he was filled and led by the Holy Spirit. And the man that was fearful of in the past was now a bold, mighty apostle of God. Remember also when Peter walked on water, you'll find that in Matthew 14, 29. Let me read 14, 29 and 14, 30. When Peter walked on water and the Lord Jesus said unto Peter, he said, 14, 29, he said, come. So Peter got out of the boat and he walked on water and he came towards Jesus. The 30th verse, and when he saw the effects of the wind, he was frightened. When he saw the effects of the wind, he was frightened, fear. And he began to sink. He began to sink and he cried out, Lord, save me. So here you see Peter. The Bible says Peter was frightened. The spirit of fear came upon him. Now if you notice when it happened, the moment he took his eyes off Jesus and looked at the effects of the storm around him, fear entered him. Keep your eyes on Jesus. No matter what is going on, keep your focus on Jesus. Keep your eyes on Jesus. One of the ways to deal with fear, when you are fearful, keep your eyes on the Lord. I must say, you know, on third, Wednesday night when I saw all these messages coming from Phoenix and KZN with people frantic sending us voice notes for prayer, it brought me to a point I started to be fearful for them, to a point where I couldn't have enough supper. I said, let me just start praying. And that was the best thing I could do because at the moment I started praying, Fear left as I started to focus on Jesus. And the Holy Spirit led me. And I prayed. And many thousands of people must have been praying. Because eventually I got a message after an hour or so. That due to a meeting that had happened. Somewhere in the Phoenix area. The violence was subsiding. And then looting was going down. So it's keeping your eyes on Jesus. Many people, as I said, fear death. It's a common thing. But what does the Bible say about fearing death to your body? Matthew 10, 28, the word of the Lord Jesus. It says, do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but 
but cannot kill the soul, but rather be afraid of him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. No one except the Father never knows when you will die, as I said. But all of us one day will pass away. If there's one thing that's guaranteed in this life, that is death, death to your physical body, all will one day die. Hebrews 9.27, the Passion Translation. Every human being, every human being is appointed to die once and then face God's judgment. We all will die. Where you will spend eternity, that's important. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved. Philippians 1.21, it says, For me to live, in, to live is Christ and to die is gain. Death is actually the beginning of eternal life with Christ Jesus. We need to firmly get that in our hearts. As children of God, get that in your hearts. We often live each day as if we're going to live forever. And when death strikes, and I can tell you from experience, we suddenly realize how fragile our life is. And the Bible speaks about our life, <clears throat> our life is like a vapor. So we need to understand, to die is gain. And as the words of God says, Philippians 1.21, still on the board. For me, to live, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. As believers, get that found in your heart. When you die, you gain. You know, in South Africa today and many parts of the world, it's like we are facing a storm. But what with COVID and the struggling economy, unemployment, death, now there's unrest and there's food shortages and fuel shortages and so much of things happening. It's like a storm is raging around us. Take your eye off the storm. Focus on Jesus, on your God and your Savior, as Peter should have done. The moment Peter put his eyes on the winds and the storm around him, fear entered him. Keep your eyes on Jesus. You know, we all are fair enough. We all need to know what's happening in the world. There's nothing wrong with that. But don't, don't be so immersed or don't become so immersed in that that you start to think about that only. Get all the information that you need and move on. Get all the information that you need and move on. Don't be so focused on all the bad and everything that's going on that it starts to become part of you. You know, in David and Goliath, when we talk about David and Goliath, when young David went to face Goliath, he faced a monster of an enemy. Dave, David, uh, Goliath was reputed to be about three meters tall. His armor was reputed to weigh more than 50 kgs. Goliath's armor probably weighed more than David himself. How could this young man hope to defeat such an enemy that everyone was terrified, far bigger men than him was terrified of? Why did he not fear? Why did David not fear? If you read in 1 Samuel 17 verse 37, and David said, The Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, he will rescue me from the hand of this Philistine. And then King Saul said unto David, Go and may the Lord be with you. And then David fought in the past and he defeated the lion and the bear. In the past, David fought and he defeated the lion and the bear. And he knew that God was with him. And Saul also confirmed this by saying, May God be with you. You know, we often say, many Christians know the scripture, Joshua 1 verse 5. Let me read Joshua 1 verse 5. It says, no one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Many people know that. God never leaves you, neither does he forsake you. Coaching the scripture is wonderful. But believe it with all your heart. That's when it comes alive and that's when it starts to prosper. A clearer version of it, a clearer way of putting it in Deuteronomy 31 verse 6. It says, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord goes, for the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid or terrified because God is with you. We need to believe and understand truly that God is with you. 24-7, God is with you. We need to really get that. God is really walking with you. And as the word of God says, he won't forsake you. Like us as parents, for those parents out there, we don't forsake our children. 
your children need help, you are there for them. How much more so God, your heavenly father, he doesn't forsake you. Now, like David, as I spoke about David just now, David remembered the past. He remembered how God came through for him, how God helped him to defeat the lion and the bear. That's one of the things that we need to do. Remember your past in, the ter in terms of how did or what God did for you, how he came through for you and use that to strengthen you. God has done many things for you. Don't take that and forget about it. Park it off somewhere. In times when you are fearful, remember how God rescued you. Remember that miracle that he did five years ago. Remember that amazing thing that he did last year for you. Remember how he came through for you. Remember the healing when doctors said he could not heal, you could not be healed. Remember the wonderful things. That will strengthen you. God must be real because remember he is the one true living God. There is no other. And remember, one of the first scriptures I learned when I was a, became a believer, a believer many years ago. If God is with you, who can be against you? If God is with you, who can be against you? Romans 8, 31. What, shall, what then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Think about that. If you really believe God is with you, the living God, the God of this universe is walking with you as we spoke about walking with God last week. If you really believe God is with you, who can really be against you? Who can really be against you? It actually makes no difference because whoever comes against you is coming against the God that you serve. And no one, there is no one that is more higher, that is more powerful, than the living God that we serve. So today, this week, we've been inundated with stuff. Lots of things. From Monday, it's like there came a time where COVID-19 kind of took like a backseat in respect of the horrendous news that was literally pouring in from your WhatsApp, from Pro, from Facebook, from the news channels, YouTube. Countless stories of looting and death and burning did not make sense if you become inundated with that. No wonder after a day or two or three of watching all that continuously, you become fearful because you start to think, what if it happens to me? What if it, what if it happens to my family? But the more you soak yourself and keep your focus on Jesus, everything changes. So to combat or to deal with fear, as we read about Adam and Eve, Repent. Make sure you walk in repentance. It closes the door to fear. It closes the door to fear. Walk in repentance daily. And then hear from God. Not man. Which means read the word of God much more than you would read the news. When we come to the realization that everyone that you've ever had, ever have, Whoever will have the solution, the answer is in the Bible. Then you will never stop reading it. Every single problem that you face, the Bible carries the answer. Whatever problem, moral, legal, monetary, whatever, the Bible will present you with the solution. God will speak through his word. So soak yourself. Make sure that you read the word. Read the word all the time. If you spend more time hearing to bad stuff on the news, as I said, and less time with the word of God, you will definitely be, fe be fearful. Then trusting in God, trusting completely, trusting in the word that you read, having no doubt the word is Jesus. Trust the word, trust Jesus, whatever the word says. God says, Jeremiah 1 verse 5, he knows the plans that he has for you. Like Peter, when the Lord Jesus told him, when you grow old, he hung on to that word. So no Herod was going to kill him when he was young because the word was spoken. When Jeremiah 1.5 comes alive in your life, he knows the plans for you. Not he's going to take you out. God is in control. Dependence on the Holy Spirit. As we spoke about P, um, Stephen, speaking and talking to the Holy Spirit 
walking with the Holy Spirit. It's, it's God the Holy Spirit. It's imagine walking with the Holy Spirit continually. Who knows everything. What is going to happen your entire day, your entire life. Walking with the Holy Spirit. Developing your relationship with the Holy Spirit. And like Peter, keeping eyes on Jesus. When Peter took his eyes off Jesus and looked upon the storm. When he lost focus, fear rose. No matter what is going on, never lose focus. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep your eyes on Jesus. And remembering your past. Remembering your past testimonies. Remembering what God has done for you in the past. And for others that you've heard about. And using that to Remember how he saved you. Remember what he did. All those things should come to mind. In fact, when you walk with the Holy Spirit and you're talking with the Holy Spirit, very often the Holy Spirit will remind you of things like that to strengthen you. Remember God is with you. As I finally said at the very end, and if he is with you, who can be of, who can be against you? If anyone is against you, it's of no consequence because the God of this universe loves you and walks with you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. And he's with you. So I hope you're encouraged by that. Keep your focus on Jesus. Keep it on Jesus all the time. He will take you through the storm. Take your eyes off the storm and place it upon Jesus. Let us bow our ways in prayer. Thank you, Lord. I pray, mighty God, that as your word has been delivered, O Lord, let your word sink into our hearts, be planted, and let it grow and bear fruit. I come against the spirit of fear right now. I break its power over your people and I release that of faith and strength and courage and boldness and confidence, Lord. Let this word convict the hearts of your people that they will seek your face, that they will come to know and really realize that you will never leave them. You will never forsake them. Your eyes are always upon them. You are the God that watches over them. I thank you, Lord, for your word that says that you know the plans that you have for your people, plans for hope and a wonderful future. I release that word into all those that are watching. And I thank you for the blood of Jesus that covers us all, that mighty blood of protection, Lord. And I pray, wonderful Savior, over every one of them, and now may the Lord bless you and the Lord keep you and the Lord to make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you and the Lord to lift up his countenance upon you and give you shalom. And may God's, may the edge, edge of fire of protection be around you and your spouses and your children and your businesses and your cars and your homes and everything that is yours be surrounded by the edge of protection of the living God that Satan cannot cross. May the hand of God be upon you. May the love of God the Father be felt continually. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be ever present. And may the continuous, wonderful, intimate fellowship of the mighty Holy Spirit be always your portion. In Jesus' glorious, glorious name, I thank you, Lord God Almighty. Amen. God bless everyone. Um, so um, we are still not going to be in, uh, meeting. Well, the physical church is not opening soon. We'll let you know. Their prayer meetings go on as usual. Next week, Monday, we are starting the, not tomorrow, the Monday after, in a week's time, the singles program. I've sent out messages with regard to that. And for those that have joined the singles uh, group, WhatsApp group, you will get much more information as we go along. And there will be wonderful testimonies, as I said, out will me over on Friday also. But um, if you're so desirous, it is a good desire, and God is able to undertake and grant you the desires of your heart. Remember, the Lord is your shepherd. You shall not want. That which you want, he will provide. So goodbye and God bless you. Please be safe. Be careful out there. And uh, don't tempt the Lord your God. Be careful in what you do. May God be with you. I'm always available if you need any prayer. 
and any prayer requests, please freely send it. Goodbye and God bless. Amen.